Hey guys, welcome back. Now, today's video is gonna be something I haven't done before. What I'm doing is reviewing this film, Kodak Pro Image 100. Now, it's not a new film. It's been around in the Asian and South American markets for a while. My box actually has Spanish writing on it. But what Kodak have recently decided to do is bring it over to the European market. Apparently, they had a trial run. It sold well, so you can now buy it with most Kodak retailers. I've never shot it. Haven't really seen any images from it yet, but from what I hear, it's kind of like a cross between Portra and Ektar. Those are two of my favorite films, so I'm quite keen because Portra is getting so expensive these days, and this stuff is just about five pounds a roll, and we're almost approaching color plus levels of economy. So if it's good at that price, I'm gonna be shooting it a lot. What I'm gonna do is load some into this M6, take it around London, and um, I'll probably take the video camera as well, have a kind of a view of what I'm doing. And yeah, show you guys some pictures. You can judge for yourself. If it's what they claim it is, then I'm really excited. Apparently, and this is from Kodak's literature, it's um, similar to gold and when printed, so you can use the same kind of settings you do for that. So um, yeah, good price, good film. Let's see, I don't know. So I decided to come out at um, six in the morning partly because I'm a bit self-conscious about the vlogging thing, but also because I thought I'd get some nice sort of sunrise light on um, some of the buildings in London. I'm currently walking to the tube stop that will take me down to the South Bank. So, it's fairly bright now, but um, yeah, I'll be there in about 15 minutes and it'll be around this bright, maybe some nice light on the buildings. I have taken my first shot, it's a selfie of me in the lift because uh, I do it at the start of rolls because you can see what you're wearing and it allows you to place yourself back in the kind of mood you were. You can kind of work out what you were thinking based on sort of seeing yourself. I don't know, maybe it's something I do. Um, it's still so early that even outdoors, ISO 100 is a bit of a limitation, so that's something I'm dealing with. But yeah, beautiful clear sky. Let's see what I can get. So I just got off the tube, I'm walking across the bridge at Embankment. You can see the city behind me. It's all lit up. I'm a little bit late. Um, in fact, watch this. The sun's just gone behind that building, so if we walk back over here, what you'll be able to see is, give me one sec. There you go, there's the sun over my shoulder. Um, as it continues to rise, the, the, the shadows will get shorter but there'll still be enough light. Um, city's quieter at this time of day as well, which is nice, especially when I'm looking like a fool with my camera on a stick in front of me. Um, I think I'm gonna walk west down the south bank. I also desperately need something to eat because I got straight out of bed into the tube, so. Yeah, let's have a look. Everything looks pretty good. The water's quite still as well, which is always nice. Because um, when the Thames is all chopped up, it's not so great a backdrop. We'll see. I was quite glad when I opened my development tank to actually see the images on the roll. There's quite a saturated, kind of old-timey color palette to this film. And I feel it lends itself to certain things, but sometimes fails. You are losing a little bit of detail in shadow areas. Yeah, poor Big Ben with the uh, scaffolding up. This is actually my favorite shot from the series. I think this is the, uh, the only one I'll print. I got a bit caught up on the, um, the opposite wharf from Westminster, taking these touristy shots. This one here is such a cliche, but when I walk past it, it just feels like you have to. So I've walked out pretty far. I'm actually now just up Carnaby Street. Um, it was nice getting up really early and sort of seeing the city when it's empty of people but for the purposes of this review I kind of want shots that include people so I slightly misthought it. Um, what I think I'm going to do is wait for a bit maybe get a coffee. Um, it's about seven o'clock now so it's been about an hour since I last had the camera out. I have shot my first roll but they're all kind of film reviewy pictures. I have a lot of pictures of kind of colour palettes like high contrast scenes stuff like that just to put the film through its paces. 
but I want to show what I'm happy with. So what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, try and find something with people. I don't know how long that will take me. I mean, you look around and this place is just completely wasteland at seven o'clock. So by eight o'clock, people might be around. It is a Sunday, that's probably part of it. I'm going to find myself coffee. One aspect of getting up so early was that a lot of the buildings were lit from the top down, but the street was often quite dark. So I have a whole series of these images where the sun's only hitting the kind of the top two floors. This shot I took just to see how the film would handle the dynamic range. Obviously we got full white in the wood paneling and then there's the shadow areas. So it's fairly contrasty, but I think it handled it relatively well. This is what I mean when I say film review type pictures. I'm just looking at the reds and the greens and trying to judge quite how the film responds. I really like the green response that this film shows because it's quite a muted green. I'm not winning any awards for this one, but it was my first shot of a person. So I finished my first roll about half an hour ago. Got myself a coffee, sat for a bit. Um, I've walked up from the embankment and I'm actually north of Oxford Street now. I don't know how many of you guys know London geography, but I'm only about maybe a mile from home, so I've decided I'm just going to walk the rest of it. Um, yeah, I've got about 20 shots left on this. I haven't got many shots of people and I was really excited to kind of test out the skin tones. So what I might do is, um, yeah, maybe take some selfies or um, I'm walking through Regent's Park now, so I'll see if there's anything going on there. I thought it looks better in the slow-mo, but you can really see the green and orange color that this film seems to boost. So I'm back at mine. I've shot most of two rolls and I've decided I'm gonna finish it off by taking a few sort of self-portraits. Now, 28 mil isn't the best focal length for that kind of thing, but it does allow me to get loads of depth of field and also the, the aim doesn't have to be very exact. So I'll get a long cable release out and that should be all right. I really don't like this shot, but I'm showing it to you guys because I want to show quite how saturated the skin tones go when they're slightly underexposed. I was just using the sunlight coming in through the roof, so there's no light mods or anything involved. And you can see the areas of my skin where the sunlight is falling look relatively natural, but they get really red and um, oversaturated when they're in the shadows. This one's not really a shot, it's just a um, stool I was sitting on, but I quite like how the um, colours have come out. Okay, well that just about wraps things up. I, um, I got about 15 to 20 usable images from my two rolls, and I actually ended up making the print. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't really expecting the results I got. Um, although on reflection, I mean, maybe I should have been. I, I mentioned in the intro that it was a mix between portrait and ectop, but the reason that those are my favorite films is because they're actually quite disparate. Um, if you get portrait with saturated colors, it isn't portrait. And I guess what I was hoping for is kind of accurate skin tones, but more of vibrancy. Um, I like the way it handles greens. Obviously Kodaks and their reds are quite famous. Um, maybe not the best film for portraits, but that's obviously a little bit subjective. Now, I, um, I will be buying more of this film. I will use it but probably in a more casual way. I mean, if I'm really serious about something, I'd use Portra. The, um, the grain quality or the kind of the enlargeability of it, obviously I'm printing digitally, but um, I can still see quite a lot of grain, which maybe I wouldn't get if this was on one of Kodak's Pro films. 
Um, the other issue that I would mention is that it's very similar to Color Plus, but it's a little bit more expensive, and that's something you have to decide. I mean, I do like the colors more than Color Plus, but if you want the cheapest film, it's still going to be Color Plus or, um, or Fuji 200. Um, I, I wish that I'd tried it with a flash. Now, I haven't got time to do that. Obviously, the results are pretty predictable, but I think this would be a great film for point and shoots. If you've got something like um, a little Muji with a built-in flash, this could be the ideal film because obviously the low speed, you wouldn't care if you have the flash attached. Um, and it, it, it just really gives that kind of childhood nostalgic feel. I really, um, I really like it. I'd, um, I'd say, yeah, if you're not super, super fussed about image quality, and you do like the color palette, then go nuts. And if you're in North America, sorry guys, maybe wait a few months and try again. But yeah, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. That was the end of the video. But seeing as you're still here, I would like to ask for a little bit of feedback. Obviously this vlog format I, I didn't really know what to expect. I kind of just left the house with the camera and thought I'd figure it out. If parts of it were tedious, if I lingered for too long on the images, didn't talk long enough about what I was actually, where I was, what I was doing, please let me know. Uh, I am trying to improve. I guess that because this is all self-taught, I kind of learn different aspects at different speeds. Um, what other questions do I have for you? If you don't like the images, then I'm a bit sad really because I did do my best and yeah, I mean, I, I guess um, if I am going to be reviewing the film, I should sort of take the pictures because I, I, I've got these plans to do like Pentax reviews. I mean, I've got this big Pentax 6, 7 here that I was going to do a video on and I'm guessing you guys would prefer if I walk around and sort of show you it in use. Um, I don't want to be one of those talking head people that just sits at this desk and chats about whatever I can grab out of the frame. Um, Pentax aside, if it's too long, if it's too short, please, any feedback would be absolutely great. I, I'm, I'm rambling now, so this is it. This is the end. <laughs> Thanks for watching.